So much to say, but so little time. Blam! All right, welcome back to Getting Sober. Da, da, da. Again, my name is Jay, and today we're going to talk about not drinking alcohol. <laughs> if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and uh, leave a comment if you haven't yet. And if you left comments, leave another one because that's what community is all about, right? Hmm. So, how you doing? Today is Monday, unless you're watching this video on another day of the week besides Monday, and it doesn't matter because it's relevant information. It is still the time of COVID, which might not be relevant if you're watching this in 2050, but if you are watching this in 2050, do they have teleportation yet? Comment below. I will look much older than I do now, <laughs> 2050. I, hopefully not, hopefully I'll still look great. But so let's talk about booze or not drinking booze. Um, so what happened? Uh, an Asian guy walked into a bar and didn't drink. The end. Roll credits. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, I'm back. Um, but so yeah, I went to this weekend. A lot of you know um, that watch the channel. Oh, I want to say something. Um, the subscribers are picking up handily. And if any of you had anything to do with that, I thank you. I've been averaging um, like five, at least five new subscribers a day. And I'm not bragging, I'm just very grateful and very humble, uh, humbled by this. And um, it makes me feel really, really good. It makes me feel like I'm doing something right. And not only are a lot of you commenting and showering me with great comments, um, and also taking the time to you know email me at gettingsoberagain at gmail.com. I appreciate all of the love and all of the support. And I also, I love uh, the support that some of you have been giving to some of the other people in the comments section. That is what it's all about and helps make my job <laughs> a little bit easier because as the channel continues to grow, I can't comment back to everybody, but I have still so far, I think I have a uh, hundred percent success rate. <laughs> so thank you for your support um, in doing my own job of keeping this channel going and supporting others. So um, let's see, what do we got? So, so yeah, this weekend, um, as some of you know, I play a lot of pool or I used to play a lot of pool before COVID happened. But, um, you know, I, I see my mom every week and um, she's a uh, See, she's more at risk than other people. And again, regardless of your politics and all that stuff, I want to make sure that I'm not getting her sick because I still do go to the gym every day. And, um, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to wear a mask at the gym when I'm like really putting in a lot of work. Uh, just the mask gets sucked into my nose and it gets sucked into my mouth. And sometimes I'm just like, I just take the thing off. I hate to say it. Don't at me. Don't <laughs> cancel me. I just, it, it's hard. But uh, my whole point is, uh, you know, this weekend I did go out. And um, you might say like, well, Jay, did you drink? What happened? How'd you do it? How are you able to be around other human beings without a beverage? And I'll tell you, I, um, it was interesting. I went, um, I went out with the friends. Uh, she and I went to uh, grab some tacos. We had Taco Saturday. It's not catchy. <laughs> and uh, so we went for uh, tacos on Saturday and I went and played pool after that nine o'clock. And I played so much pool so much to play. that um, I only I lost like twice over the span of like three hours. I had like 15 people at one point watching me, like all the college kids came in and like some of the old players came in and everybody was watching me. And then, you know, I hadn't seen a lot of people. It's, it's almost like a reunion every time I go back because somebody will show up and they'll be like, hey, what's going on? Where have you been? <laughs> and I'm like, I've been sober. <laughs> I've been coming in here. Um, but I am trying to figure out how to be a sociable adult, you know, without my crutch. So, you know, I might be on like little wobbly, shaky legs, you know, my, some of my, my jokes might not hit the way that I want them to hit. I might uh, be a little bit more shy and, and reserved and maybe not as outgoing um, as normal, but like I, some of that's also in my head. And some of that might, might also just be in your head. You know, there's reservations you might have about like going out in public and uh, grabbing a table, waiting for somebody or sitting at the bar or sitting on a patio or, you know, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna drink any alcohol. The server's gonna hate me. I was like, I can't, well, I can't go to the bar and sit at the bar. They'd be angry at me if I don't order a drink from the bar. And I just get, I just say, give me a water. I mean, but like, that's part of their job also too. It's like, I mean, you can order, you can order something else. I were um, at that particular bar, I order a non-alcoholic ginger beer. And um, so they don't have a whole heck of a lot of options and I don't wanna, I don't wanna drink. I mean, I could just drink like a Coke or something like that or a Sprite, but, um, and I tip accordingly, you know, it's uh, I still tip the, the extra dollar or $2 or whatever it is. So keep that in mind, you know, if that's one of like one of your little 
uh, rational fears <laughs> of uh, oh, what do I do with the bartender? I don't want, I don't want them to hate me. Um, and you know that's that's a valid thought. And you know, thank you for. Uh, being aware of the possibility that you might be pissing off the bartender who normally <laughs> was making five, seven, ten, fifteen dollars off of a tip from you doesn't mean that you still can't tip. You know, you can still, if you're gonna use that place to socialize, and if that's where some of your buddies are, are at and some of your, uh, you know, your, where your co workers wanna go, you know, still do your job to try to be a good patron and try to keep a good relationship between you and that establishment. So I went and I played pool this weekend and, um, and people apparently have been asking, uh, have been asking like, Where, where's Jay been? Uh, my friend is a bartender there. And she was telling some of my, uh, some of the, you know, people I used to play pool with and other people, they would, you know, they knew that she and I hung out and they were asking her like, well, hey, where is Jay? <laughs> where's Jay been? And it's been like blowing people's minds that like, I'm sober. And not to say like I was a raging alcoholic, but like, I don't know, my, my, my pulling stops, you know, when I was drinking, I was just, it was just go, go, go. It wasn't like, nah, I have to get to bed at a reasonable hour. <laughs> it was more so like, well, I could still get four hours of sleep. <laughs> if you've been there, comment below. When you're rationalizing how much, how much time you have left that you could still theoretically sleep, knowing like full well, you're gonna feel like trash the next morning or you're just gonna lay in bed and just like stare at the ceiling <laughs> you've ever been there uh yeah me too so um it was it was really interesting like having the support base and people sticking up for me and then like you know turning people's mind changing people's minds you know a friend of mine apparently right after i stopped drinking i was trying to get him to stop drinking and um he uh, apparently wound up getting a dui and uh, i don't know if you remember from one of my from one of my uh previous stories <laughs> This particular bar, this friend I talked about in another video, I have no idea what episode, so there will not be a thumbnail of a video here. Maybe I'll think of something funny to put up here. <laughs> but he was the one that said, there was a round table discussion at the bar and the discussion was, so why do you like coming here? Why is this your favorite bar? And other than, you know, it being a lovely place, you know, a lovely sociable place that has pool tables, his answer was, because I can DUI home. And then he wound up getting a DUI. Not from that bar though. So he was uh, somewhere else, I guess. So I found that out. And apparently there was been, there, there have been a lot of like drama and stuff that happened. And somebody got, uh, you know, somebody else got a car accident. There was a gun robbery at gunpoint. And I was just like, oh my God, what if that's what happens <laughs> over a winter time? And I was just here making these videos for you all. So uh, thank you for giving me a reason to now potentially get into a car accident or robbed a gunpoint or a DUI. Ah, I love you. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I also had some other friends uh, that uh, I also influenced, some other people that were on under the influence of some other things in our collective past and uh, running into them. And uh, another, you know, this is another friends who came and watched me play pool. And, um, and again, while everybody was watching me play pool, um, one of the guys, was you know so impressed with me playing or whatever and uh, you know word gets around about me playing and then you know drinks start getting offered to me and my friend stuck up for me and told the other guy that i don't drink and the guy looked at me and he said oh you don't drink and i said nope i didn't even explain it like it made me feel really good it made me feel like I was gonna pull the sword from the stone. <laughs> it made me feel like 160 pound Asian King Arthur <laughs> and I could slay anything and anybody. And uh, and I did, I just kept tearing away at that pool table and I was sober. And uh, you know, I don't know about you, like if you go to a bar or if you ever play pool or darts or you know, like whatever, do karaoke, you like bar stuff, right? Cornhole, whatever, a lot of people say, well, I've never played pool sober, or I've never thrown darts sober, or I've never done karaoke sober. And it's like, yeah, I know, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Like we've just been, it's like we were young, dumb kids, and then we turned 21, and a lot of us didn't wait until we were 21 to start drinking. And then we just depended on this crutch the, the whole time. So it was like, we became of age to then be around a bunch of people and be around a bunch of social situations and work meetings and whatever else and happy hour with Cody, somebody's birthday and blah, 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 it's an anniversary and it's Thanksgiving and it's Christmas and it's New Year's Eve. And what's everybody doing? Everybody's drinking because everybody's nervous and everybody has social anxiety and everybody like, nobody knows how to just like, 
chill out for a minute and like really sit with your feelings and your anxiety. And it's like the quick re remedy as soon as you feel your heart beating a little bit is like, oh, you slap that easy button. And then you just want to go to the bar like, give me a double. I don't have to come back here and wait in line again. Just give me two of them. Let me double fist, <laughs> which is another another sign of the, in the video that I'm going to make here in the future. You know, signs that you're an alcoholic or signs that you're drinking too much. I'm not sure what I'm going to name it yet. Vote below. What do you want that? What do you want that title of that podcast to be? Signs that you're an alcoholic <laughs> or signs that you're drinking too much. I think the second one's probably a little bit nicer, right? Um, but that's going to be a sign is that uh, if you go to the bar <laughs> and uh, you double fist because you're too impatient to wait for another drink, you might be drinking too much or you might be an alcoholic, <laughs> depending on which, you know, title we go with. But um, I felt really good that, uh, that, that I didn't over explain to that person who offered me the drink. I didn't over explain to them and say like, hey, um, well, so, you know, like, I used to like, I mean, if you came here like six months ago, yeah, would it, like I didn't, I didn't offer an explanation as to why I don't drink. It was just, I don't drink. And I was still kicking everybody's butt <laughs> at pool, which made me feel really good. And, um, and I felt like I was, I was becoming a, a more positive influence again, too. It was just like I was putting in the work. It was leading by example, right? And it's like anybody, any of you that have ever worked for somebody else, had a job or whatever, it's like, Having somebody to lead by example, you know, is invaluable. Somebody that, that shows kindness and compassion. And those are all things that I'm working on personally to uh, be able to be a better host for this channel for you all. And that somebody, you know, if maybe I have a kid someday or I have a partner, a spouse, whatever, you know, I want to be that person for those people. And also, too, it's not just that I want to be that person for those people. Like I said in previous episodes, I want to be that person for the little person inside of me for that little Asian bowl cut four-year-old version of me that was wondering like, am I gonna be the president of the United States someday? Probably not, <laughs> but <laughs> full of optimism, thinking we're gonna be have flying cars and we are gonna teleport and like hope that our feet and our hands come too. It's like, I left my feet, hold on, I gotta re-teleport back home, put my hand back on. Who knows, you know, you have crazy thoughts on your kid and like the Jetsons were on, it's, that wasn't unreasonable. It was an unreasonable thought. <laughs> um, but so, I don't know, when I was, uh, you know, when I was a kid, kid, I, a lot of fear and anxiety, you know, it depends on the household and the environment that you grow up in. And then more fear and anxiety come, you're, you're exposed to more kids at school and kids from different households and different class levels, and then more fear and more anxiety. And then you get older and then you start to smell weird and hair grows in different places. And you got a crush on somebody and they don't like you back or somebody likes you and you don't like them back. And you're just like, and you don't know what to do. And you're like, I ah, should I kiss this person? And then you just talk nervously in the car for two hours and then you kiss and then you're like, oh, I'm dating this, you know. So so the whole point about that was that, uh, you know, we just grow up full of all these different anxieties and depending on what kind of resources you have um, and people around you in your community, you may continue to just develop bad habits and uh, weird or sorry, I don't want to say weird, but um, bad coping mechanisms like drinking or smoking pot or popping pills or whatever, because you found something that somebody else found comfort in. Somebody that you identify with being a, a confidant or trustworthy or just like somebody that you could just get along with. Somebody who just likes the same cartoon as you or the same football team or whatever. And you're just like, oh, well, well, they drink. I know them. I've been to their house. We hang out. They drink. And then they told me like, oh, it feels great. And then so I do. And they were right. It felt pretty good. And then I threw up and I didn't feel good, you know. And then so it's like we end up tackling all these social situations with like drinking and never really establishing who we are as people, knowing who you are. Like, this is who I am, right? It's not like I'm putting on a show for this show, but this is who I, this is who I am and this is how I talk. This is not scripted. I'm not reading from a teleprompter. There are no cuts, there are no edits here. I'm just talking to you freely. And that's what I want to be. And that's what I want for you also. I want you to be able to feel comfortable in your own skin, in your own environment, in any room that you step in so that you can feel like you don't need this crutch, that you don't need to grab, uh, grab your bowl or light up or grab a drink or whatever to feel like you're fitting in with the people around you. I want you to be you and I want you to be able to feel comfortable expressing yourself the way that you want to express yourself, saying the things that are on your mind without judgment. And if you're getting judged, then decide what the quality of the people is around you. And if that's something that you want to continue. Right. And I, you know, I, I did talk about like in previous episodes, like I'm a little bit lonelier right now than I had been previously, you know, 
right now I'm going more so for quality over quantity, right? And it's uh, really easy to get out of focus. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's really easy to, uh, to surround yourself with a plethora of drinking buddies and quantity, I'm sorry, uh, uh, quantity of friends versus quality of friends. And as we continue to get older and make hopefully better decisions instead of worse decisions, right? Um, hopefully we surround ourselves with a better quality of people and are making a better quality of decisions. And that will lead to more confidence for us so that we feel like we can walk into a room and slay without a crutch and socialize without a crutch and go to family gatherings without a crutch. And um, eventually you'll still keep watching and supporting this channel, <laughs> but eventually you won't feel like you need those crutches. And maybe, you know, you won't have to spend so much time watching this channel, but I'm glad that you do. And so with that, I think that was a perfect video. I don't know about you, comment below. Sorry, I clapped right in front of the microphone. Uh, <laughs> and good luck on your journey. And I look forward to seeing you where? In the next video.